NBC shelter. And what does that mean? It's protection against nuclear, biological, and chemical, all known threats. So this is the bomb shelter? This is the bomb shelter. Let's take a look. The New Day bomb shelter. <laughs> So you have food and provisions upstairs, but this is where you keep the serious stuff. Exactly. How much stuff do you have down here? Upstairs was a day, maybe a week. So if you had something like an earthquake, something that you'd have to get through a short time here, you have enough for at least three months to get through a flu, any kind of serious biological. So you've got food, you've got some gear here. Explain what that gear is. These are backpacks. If you had to leave the facility, you put the backpacks on, you go out. You have gas masks, backpacks, and you can put an NBC suit on and leave. But you're going to be down here three months. You've only got about a uh, week's worth of champagne here. I'm a little bit worried about you. The cost for what Corby calls entry-level protection up to $3 million, or as he puts it, it can be fabulously more expensive. The going rate for fabulous, $10 million, the price of one of Corby's latest projects. It would be full life support systems that would keep these people and sustain them for generations, even if they were the last two people on Earth. So these people, they're not worried about a hurricane, they're worried about the end of the world. Well, there wouldn't be an end of the world, it would just be an end to our world. They'll still be here. Still to come, dangerously rich. They retrieved a shotgun. And the target of a bizarre underground crime. Plus, high flying into the most dangerous places for billionaires. We brought passengers in, dropped them. Why 30,000 feet, designed to stave off any incoming missile attacks, could be safer than being grounded. And securing this $50 million mega yacht far from home and far from any help. High security on the high seas. When we come back, more security secrets of the super rich. Up, and I'm coming. Bodyguards, panic rooms. We're going into the bomb shelter. The super rich can afford to manage every potential risk factor. One of the biggest vulnerabilities for the super rich is when they're on the move. And at the top end, that means traveling by private jet at airports like this one in Palm Beach, Florida, where they specialize in protecting the jets and the people on board. Florida-based John Casenza is a security consultant for private aviation. He says the dangers aren't always a mile high. We've brought passengers in, drop them, and then uh, reposition the aircraft. You fly I mean, the aircraft fly out? Fly the there. aircraft out to a safer location where it's safe for the aircraft and the crew, and then come back and pick up the passengers. So which airports do you not want to leave your airplane in? Well, there's some in sub-Saharan Africa that are a little dicey. Being on the plane and flying is probably the safest place that people can be. On the tarmac, the security threats can be countless, sometimes deadly. You can do things outside the aircraft to put it in jeopardy if it does get off the ground. What do you mean? Well, things to the engine, things that could be put into things like the wheel wells. And once airborne, the super wealthy leave nothing to chance. At the ultra high end, the security experts tell us there are a couple of dozen aircraft in the world, like this private Gulfstream G4, that have electronic countermeasures designed to stave off any incoming missile attacks. Those countermeasures can include things like jamming systems to block infrared tracking systems for missiles. But at sea, mega yachts and their wealthy owners are especially enticing to pirates and terrorists as high yield and highly visible targets. In fact, experts say most yachts are much less secure and much more vulnerable than their owners' homes or private jets. For billionaires, sometimes the ultimate toy can become the ultimate danger zone. These super yachts cruise far away from civilization and far away from any police response. In terms of security, they've got to be totally self-sufficient. Land security, people have their homes with fences around them, and they have security people, law enforcement people, within minutes uh, being able to respond to their homes. Retired Coast Guard Vice Admiral Brian Peterman specializes in what he says is head of state level protection for luxury super yachts. His goal, turning super yachts into floating fortresses, because when it comes to being out at sea, the response time may not be measured in minutes, it could be days. You have to be able to take uh, measures on your boats to be able to maintain your safety and security. you're on your own when you're out here. Exactly, until the good guys can come and rescue you. We're inside the master suite of the super yacht Harbor Island. 
And a security expert can take a space like this and make it into a giant panic room with ballistic glass to protect against bullets and two or three days worth of food so a family can live safely in here even if the pirates are out there. It protects you from gunfire from the outside. They also have communications on board where you can alert the, uh, the law enforcement people to come and assist you. These provide the ability for the crew to maintain command and control of the vessel. One of the most important aspects of super yacht security is understanding exactly who's stepping on board your boat. This yacht actually has a security system embedded in the deck that can detect every footstep and immediately train cameras on anybody who's coming on board the yacht. Six staterooms, a posh dining room, a sun deck. Annual maintenance alone on super yachts like this costs about 10% of the yacht's overall value. And then to keep everyone on board safe? You expect to pay somewhere about uh, 7 to 8% of the entire value of the boat, uh, adding um, really top level security measures into it. This is a yacht we're standing on now that is going for $54 million. That's correct. We're talking about a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but uh, the stakes are high as well. According to U.S. Navy records, four yachts were hijacked by pirates just last year. There's been a tragic end to a very tense situation. In one of those attacks, which American officials called one of the most violent episodes since the modern-day piracy epidemic began, the owners and their guests were shot and killed. Up next, on guard. Back leg up from here. Hand-to-hand oh. -hand combat with the man the Oracle of Omaha is investing in to protect him. I'm absolutely emotionally prepared to kill somebody if I have to. Fired up and down range. This is firearms training. And inside, Dan Clark's arsenal. When dangerously rich, billionaire super security returns. Greenwich, Connecticut, 2003. A bizarre kidnapping over the weekend. In Billionaire hedge fund manager Edward Eddie Lampert, hailed by some as the next Warren Buffett, is kidnapped at gunpoint in this underground parking garage. They retrieved a shotgun. The abducted financier is released unharmed after being held for more than 30 hours. It was one of those seminal moments. Whether it's a serious crime or an embarrassing moment like media mogul Rupert Murdoch hit with a pie in the face. Oh. Bodyguard Dan Clark's job Back leg up. is to thwart every type of attack, no matter how harmless or hostile. Andy Grove said that only the paranoid survive, and that's my job, is to take all these things into consideration. Working as Warren Buffett's protective detail for almost two decades now, Clark, I'm coming in here like who spent this. almost 24 years with the Omaha Police Department, has made a name for himself in the private security world. Pull my weapon out. He's recruited about 100 men and women to work with his own firm, Clark International. Despite their police and military experience, Clark's agents still routinely train with him. In addition to Warren Buffett, Clark says he serves a roster of other high-profile clients he's not allowed to name. No matter who he's protecting, though, his team needs to be ready to stop and sometimes incapacitate an assailant. But some situations could trigger more lethal action, and they need to be just as prepared to respond. This is firearms training. They're using real bullets today, and most of these officers are using Glock handguns, like this Glock 40. They're standing right up close to these targets today because they expect in a real-life situation, they'll be as close to the assailant as about seven feet. And key to maintaining control of the situation, Dan, look, look. Attention to every vulnerability from every direction. Looking for more threats? Now, one of the most important skills they learn is how to clear the protectee out of the way and still hit the target. Hey, 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 hey. Are you emotionally prepared to kill somebody if you have to? I'm absolutely emotionally prepared to kill somebody if I have to. If you hesitate, it can be very deadly for you and also if you're protecting somebody, obviously. Stay there and do the tradition. Clark says he's never actually had to, to fire that. a weapon we're protecting a client. Out of the way, and then we're going to attack and get our weapon on target. He says he avoids using force and tries to minimize any potential risks with advanced planning and detail. Move it! 
And while he doesn't have to always like the people he protects, there's been a number of gang members and people that I've official capacity had to protect or provide security for. I didn't necessarily care for them. He says he's fortunate his clients generally have, as he says, a certain amount of gratitude that they've given back. You can't help but to develop a relationship uh, with the folks that you're working for. At the same time, you do have to remember what your job is and what you're there for. Despite Warren Buffett's very public demeanor, Clark is private about his relationship with the Berkshire Hathaway CEO. And the fact is, Clark can't protect Buffett from everything. But some of the super rich are plotting ways to survive, no matter what. When we have an apocalypse and all this is destroyed and the last two people left alive on the planet Earth are going to be two billionaires. Right. Adam and Eve. And if you got to start over, <laughs> that's probably a good place to start with Adam and Eve. <laughs> The difference between the dangerously rich and the rest of us, they can afford to think in biblical proportions.